I'm Ms. Michael Blue of the Blue Law Group. We have offices in Los Angeles County uh, as well as the Inland Empire Rancho Cucamonga, serving the needs of uh, clients in the Inland Empire as well as Los Angeles and Orange Counties. Today we're going to talk about uh, the six major issues uh, that people encounter and confront uh, when either divorcing or separating. And these are the issues that really can cause problems in the particular with respect to uh, getting custody and custodial time uh, with their children. Now, first on the list is engaging in any kind of violence, particularly domestic violence, and even engaging in stalking. Now, the problem is that if you are going to put your hands on somebody, aside from the fact that that's against the law, uh, you are gonna really hurt your position with respect to, you, to getting custodial time with your children. Under the Family Code, the best interest of the child is the prominent standard, the preeminent standard in family law. <clears throat> and so, when you are engaging in domestic violence, the, it is not unlikely for the courts to make a finding that you are a danger to the child as well, that you are, in essence, not in the best interest of the child. Now, similarly, with, if you're going to stalk, aside again from it being against the law, you are potentially getting in the area of getting a, a restraining order filed against you. If you have a restraining order filed against you, again, the best interest of the child standard is going to be extremely vulnerable for you to try to prove to a court, if you've got a restraining order, that you are also in the best interest of the child. So these are two areas that are very, very important that you be aware of and not engage in. Now, second issue is leaving emails or voicemails or engaging in, in Instagram or any kind of uh, media, uh, online sort of media communications because you're leaving a record of things. And, and trust me when I tell you, uh, it is not uncommon at all that in a litigation setting, in family court, that if you've left that kind of record, that record's going to come back and it will be presented in a court of law and it will be used against you. And often, uh, what's going to happen, if it's, if it's uh, bothersome enough, court of law and the judge is going to diminish your custodial time because of that. And, and, and keep in mind that anything that you put in writing or on the record, a voicemail, Instagram, Facebook, whatever it be, you can expect that to come back in that court and be used against you. So be very, very careful with what you write what you say and just keep your composure keep your cool and don't engage in any kind of violent or aggressive communications now third is uh, often what happens is parents start separating they're angry and what they do is they end up taking that anger out and talking to the children and discussing with the children uh, some of the negative aspects that they believe the other parent has now, unfortunately, especially if you put that in writing in an email or an Instagram or Facebook, you're gonna have a record of saying these things to your children. Rest assured that the other parent is not unlikely to go and use that information against you, either in court before a judge or before a mediator, which is a requirement under the Family Code when there's children uh, at issue, that you and the other parent go before the mediator and and hash out the issues. And it's in that hashing out that the other parent is uh, not uncommon going to use that information of you talking to the children uh, in an adverse way uh, against you. And it is also not uncommon that the mediator take a very negative stance in terms of how much time that mediator will recommend to a judge uh, how much custodial time you will have uh, with respect to that recommendation. If you're engaging in that kind of discussions with the children, it's not uncommon for a mediator to say, uh, this person should not have as much time as he or she otherwise would have uh, without engaging in that kind of discussion with those children. Now, taking that to the extreme in some cases is keeping your children away from the other parent. And that is a very, very big problem, a very, very big issue, and the courts don't look kindly on that at all. If you are keeping your children away from the other side, the other parent, it is not uncommon for that parent to go into a court and get an emergency order, and it is likewise not uncommon for a court to grant at least a temporary order giving custody to
to that other parent. At its most extreme, a court may make a finding that you are trying to sever the relationship of the non-custodial parent, the other parent. And if a court makes that finding, your custodial time is going to be diminished dramatically. And even in, in, in even more extreme cases, your custodial time will actually be supervised. The court will impose a supervisor to, to supervise your, your meetings with your children. You are, in those cases, very unlikely to have overnight visits at all. So keep that in mind when you're engaging in any of this kind of behavior, keeping the children away from the other parent, even for short periods of time. And certainly in the most extreme cases, severing the relationship of, uh, of the children. Now, um, another issue that has come up uh, in, in our clients in, in, in the past is the anger setting in to a point where uh, they use litigation as a tool to get back at each other. Uh, that is not a good idea for many, many reasons, but primarily it is just going to cost you a lot of money and unnecessarily. That anger that you have, uh, that you push into filing motions and other sorts of documents in a court to get back to the other parent, retribute, engage in retribution against the other parent, that's gonna end up costing a tremendous amount of money. And it is, it is a matter of routine that in those sorts of cases, you see a 15, 20, $25,000 bill very, very quickly. Um, and you should be very careful with that. Do not engage in this sort of retribution, this sort of get back at the other parent because it's gonna cost you a lot to do that. Now, uh, very similar to that, retribution is, uh, is going and drinking or getting involved in drug use uh, in the aftermath of your breakup. Uh, we've had clients that, that engage in drinking and then go out and drive a car on the thoroughfares of this state and get pulled over and eventually get convicted of a DUI, uh, for example. Uh, or even worse, drug possession or drug use uh, and get uh, a violation for that on their criminal record. Aside from the fact that it's very likely going to end up on your criminal record if you're convicted, uh, which has all kinds of repercussions, uh, it's going to have repercussions in the family court. Uh, if you are convicted, rest assured, uh, you should expect the other parent to come into a court of law and present that evidence before the judge uh, and ask that court to limit your custodial time. And, 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 and you should expect almost that a court will look at that information, especially if it's in, it, it just happened to reduce your custodial time, in some cases, substantially. And it, and it would not be a surprise, it certainly wouldn't be out of the realm of the experience that we've had in the family courts, uh, where the court actually puts you on supervised visits, again, putting a moderator in front of you and in front of your child uh, to supervise your visits with your child and the likelihood of getting overnight visits while you are under the supervised visits is highly uh, unlikely and really impossible actually. Um, so that is what you're looking at if you're engaging in drug and alcohol use and particularly if you have your child in that car when you are drinking and driving, you are not, it is not going to be a good result for you. You will have criminal issues, very likely if the police cite you for that, for endangering the child in addition to your DUI. Uh, and if, that other, if the other parent has any sorts of legal representation, you can expect that information to come before the court and you to be reduced uh, with your custodial time and, and not uncommonly uh, be imposed supervised visits. So remember, in the end, it is the best interest of the child. And the best approach to take is a moderate approach, an approach with the other parent, knowing that you have a long relationship together, that no matter how bad it ends, 
that you have this long-term relationship, that this other parent is the parent of your child. And it is really in the best interest to work together as best as you can uh, and create the best environment for your child. Because again, the most, the prominent standard in the family code and the law under the laws of the state of California is the best interest of the child. And parents that act in the most amenable way to the other parent, not trying to sever the relationship of the other parent, engaging the other parent, being fruitful with the other parent, being reasonable and, and receptive to the other parent, and trying to create the best environment possible for that child. The courts in this state, under the family law, under the family code, take that uh, that sort those sorts of conditions with a, a great respect and are very amenable to the parent that engage in those, in those acts. And that is going to be your best foot forward in putting the best environment for your child and getting the best and most custodial time uh, under the family law. So uh, with that, again, my name is Michael Blue of the Blue Law Group. Again, we have offices in Los Angeles and uh, Rancho Cucamonga in Los Angeles County, San Bernardino County. Uh, serving our clients' needs from San Bernardino County to Riverside, uh, Los Angeles, and Orange Counties. Thank you very much.